The Merchant of Venice, by William Shakespeare. Act 2. Scene 1. Belmont. A room in Portia's house. Flourish of cornets. Enter the Prince of Morocco, a tawny moor all in white, and three or four followers accordingly, with Portia, Nerissa and their train. Prince of Morocco. Mislike me not for my complexion, the shadowed livery of the burnished sun, to whom I am a neighbor, and near bred. Bring me the fairest creature northward born, where Phoebus fire scarce thaws the icicles, and let us make incision for your love, to prove whose blood is reddest, his or mine. I tell thee, lady, this aspect of mine, hath feared the valiant, by my love I swear, the best regarded virgins of our clime, have loved it too. I would not change this hue, except to steal your thoughts, my gentle queen. Portia. In terms of choice I am not solely led, by nice direction of a maiden's eyes, besides, the lottery of my destiny, bars me the right of voluntary choosing. But if my father had not scant me, and hedged me by his wit to yield myself, his wife who wins me by that means I told you, yourself, renowned prince, then stood as fair, as any comer I have looked on yet, for my affection. Prince of Morocco, even for that I thank you, therefore I pray you lead me to the caskets, to try my fortune, by this scimitar, that slew the Sophie and a Persian prince, that won three fields of Sultan Suleiman, I would o'erstare the sternest eyes that look, outbrave the heart most daring on the earth, pluck the young sucking cubs from the she-bear, yeah, mock the lion when he roars for prey, to win thee, lady, but, alas the while, if Hercules and liches play at dice, which is the better man, the greater throw, may turn by fortune from the weaker hand, so is Alcides beaten by his rage, and so may I, blind fortune leading me, miss that which one unworthier may attain, and die with grieving, Portia, you must take your chance, and either not attempt to choose at all, or swear before you choose, if you choose wrong, never to speak to lady afterward, in way of marriage, therefore be advised, prince of Morocco, nor will not, come, bring me unto my chance, Portia, first, forward to the temple, after dinner, your hazard shall be made, prince of Morocco, good fortune then, to make me blessed or cursed esti among men, cornets, exeunt, scene two, Venice, a street, enter Launcelot Gobbo, the clown, alone, Launcelot, certainly my conscience will serve me to run from this Jew my master, the fiend is at mine elbow and tempts me, saying to me Gabo, Launcelot Gabo, good Launcelot, or good Gabo, or good Launcelot Gabo, use your legs, take the start, run away, my conscience says no, take heed, honest Launcelot, take heed, honest Gabo or, as aforesaid, honest Launcelot Gabo, do not run, scorn running with thy heels, well, the most courageous fiend bids me pack, FIA, says the fiend, away, says the fiend, for the heavens, rouse up a brave mind, says the fiend and run. Well, my conscience, hanging about the neck of my heart, says very wisely to me my honest friend Launcelot, being an honest man's son or rather an honest woman's son, for indeed my father did something smack, something grotto, he had a kind of taste, well, my conscience says Launcelot, budge not. Budge, says the fiend. Budge not, says my conscience. Conscience, say I, you counsel well. Fiend, say I, you counsel well. To be ruled by my conscience, I should stay with the Jew my master, who, God bless the mark, is a kind of devil, and, to run away from the Jew, I should be ruled by the fiend, who, saving your reverence, is the devil himself. Certainly the Jew is the very devil incarnation, and, in my conscience, my conscience is but a kind of hard conscience, to offer to counsel me to stay with the Jew. The fiend gives the more friendly counsel. I will run, fiend, my heels are at your commandment, I will run. Enter old Gobbo with a basket. Gobbo. Master young man, you, I pray you, which is the way to master Jews. Launcelot. Aside. O oh heavens, this is my true begotten father, who being more than sand blind, high gravel blind, knows me not. I will try confusions with him. Gobbo. Master young gentleman, I pray you, which is the way to master Jews. Launcelot. Turn up on your right hand at the next turning, but at the next turning of all on your left, Mary, at the very next turning, turn of no hand, but turn down indirectly to the Jew's house. Gobbo. Be God's Santis, twill be a hard way to hit. Can you tell me whether one Launcelot, 
that dwells with him, dwell with him or no. Launcelot. Talk you of young master Launcelot? Aside. Mark me now, now will I raise the waters. Talk you of young master Launcelot? Gobbo. No master, sir, but a poor man's son, his father, though I say tea, is an honest exceeding poor man, and, God be thanked, well to live. Launcelot. Well, let his father be what he will, we talk of young master Launcelot. Gobbo. Your worship's friend, and Launcelot, sir. Launcelot. But I pray you, ergo, old man, ergo, I beseech you, talk you of young master Launcelot? Gobbo. Of Launcelot, and please your mastership. Launcelot. Ergo, master Launcelot. Talk not of master Launcelot, father, for the young gentleman, according to fates and destinies, and such odd sayings, the sisters three and such branches of learning, is indeed deceased, or, as you would say in plain terms, gone to heaven. Gobbo. Mary, God forbid. The boy was the very staff of my age, my very prop. Launcelot. Aside. Do I look like a cudgel or a hovel post, a staff or a prop? Do you know me, father? Gobbo. Alack the day? I know you not, young gentleman, but I pray you tell me, is my boy, God rest his soul, alive or dead? Launcelot. Do you not know me, father? Gobbo. Alack, sir, I am sand blind, I know you not. Launcelot. Nay, indeed, if you had your eyes, you might fail of the knowing me, it is a wise father that knows his own child. Well, old man, I will tell you news of your son. Give me your blessing, truth will come to light, murder cannot be hid long, a man's son may, but in the end truth will out. Gobbo. Pray you, sir, stand up, I am sure you are not Launcelot my boy. Launcelot. Pray you, let's have no more fooling about it, but give me your blessing. I am Launcelot, your boy that was, your son that is, your child that shall be. Gobbo. I cannot think you are my son. Launcelot. I know not what I shall think of that, but I am Launcelot, the Jew's man, and I am sure Marjorie your wife is my mother. Gobbo. Her name is Marjorie, indeed. I'll be sworn if thou be Launcelot, thou art mine own flesh and blood. Lord worshipped might he be, what a beard hast thou got? Thou hast got more hair on thy chin than Dobbin my fill horse has on his tail. Launcelot. It should seem, then, that Dobbin's tail grows backward. I am sure he had more hair on his tail than I have on my face when I last saw him. Gobbo. Lord, how art thou changed? How dost thou and thy master agree? I have brought him a present. How agree you now? Launcelot. Well, well. But for mine own part, as I have set up my rest to run away, so I will not rest till I have run some ground. My master's a very Jew. Give him a present? Give him a halter. I am famished in his service. You may tell every finger I have with my ribs. Father, I am glad you are come, give me your present to one master Bassanio, who indeed gives rare new liveries. If I serve not him, I will run as far as God has any ground. O rare fortune, here comes the man. To him, Father, for I am a Jew, if I serve the Jew any longer. Enter Bassanio with Leonardo and a follower or two. Bassanio. You may do so, but let it be so haste that supper be ready at the farthest by five of the clock. See these letters delivered, put the liveries to making, and desire Graciano to come anon to my lodging. Exit a servant. Launcelot. To him, Father. Gobbo. God bless your worship. Bassanio. Gramercy, wouldst thou aught with me? Gobbo. Here's my son, sir, a poor boy. Launcelot. Not a poor boy, sir, but the rich Jew's man that would, sir, as my father shall specify, Gobbo. He hath a great infection, sir, as one would say, to serve. Launcelot. Indeed the short and the long is, I serve the Jew, and have a desire, as my father shall specify, Gobbo. His master and he, saving your worship's reverence, are scarce cater cousins. Launcelot. To be brief, the very truth is that the Jew, having done me wrong, doth cause me, as my father, being I hope an old man, shall fruitify unto you. Gobbo. I have here a dish of doves that I would bestow upon your worship, and my suit is. Launcelot. In very brief, the suit is impertinent to myself, as your worship shall know by this honest old man, and though I say it, though old man, yet poor man, my father. Bassanio. One speak for both. What would you? Launcelot. Serve you, sir. Gobbo. That is the very defect of the matter, 
sir. Vasanio. I know thee well, thou hast obtained thy suit. Shylock thy master spoke with me this day, and hath preferred thee, if it be preferment, to leave a rich Jew's service to become, the follower of so poor a gentleman. Launcelot. The old proverb is very well parted between my master Shylock and you, sir, you have the grace of God, sir, and he hath enough. Vasanio. Thou speakest he it well. Go, father, with thy son. Take leave of thy old master, and inquire, my lodging out, to a servant. Give him a livery, more guarded than his fellows, see it done. Launcelot. Father, in. I cannot get a service, no. I have ne'er a tongue in my head. Looking on his palm. Well, if any man in Italy have a fairer table which doth offer to swear upon a book, I shall have good fortune, go to, here's a simple line of life. Here's a small trifle of wives, alas, fifteen wives is nothing, eleven widows and nine maids is a simple coming in for one man. And then to scape drowning thrice, and to be in peril of my life with the edge of a feather bed, here are simple scapes. Well, if fortune be a woman, she's a good wench for this gear. Father, come, I'll take my leave of the Jew in the twinkling. Exeunt Launcelot and old Gobbo. Vasanio. I pray thee, good Leonardo, think on this. These things being bought and orderly bestowed. Return in haste, for I do feast tonight. My best esteemed acquaintance, hie thee, go. Leonardo. My best endeavors shall be done herein. Enter Graciano. Graciano. Where's your master? Leonardo. Yonder, sir, he walks. Exit. Graciano. Signor Bassanio? Bassanio. Graciano? Graciano. I have sued to you. Bassanio. You have obtained it. Graciano. You must not deny me, I must go with you to Belmont. Bassanio. Why, then you must. But hear thee, Graciano. Thou art too wild, too rude, and bold of voice. Parts that become thee happily enough, and in such eyes as ours appear not false, but where thou art not known, why there they show, something too liberal. Pray thee, take pain, to allay with some cold drops of modesty, thy skipping spirit, lest through thy wild behavior, I be misconstrued in the place I go to, and lose my hopes. Graciano, Signor Bassanio, hear me. If I do not put on a sober habit, talk with respect, and swear but now and then, wear prayer books in my pocket, look demurely, nay more, while Grace is saying, hood mine eyes, thus with my hat, and sigh, and say Amen, use all the observance of civility, like one well studied in a sad ostent, to please his grandam, never trust me more. Bassanio. Well, we shall see your bearing. Graciano. Nay, but I bar tonight, you shall not gauge me, by what we do tonight. Bassanio. No, that were pity. I would entreat you rather to put on, your boldest suit of mirth, for we have friends, that purpose merriment. But fare you well, I have some business, Graciano, and I must to Lorenzo and the rest, but we will visit you at supper time. Exeunt. Scene 3. The same. A room in Shylock's house. Enter Jessica and Launcelot. Jessica. I am sorry thou wilt leave my father so. Our house is hell, and thou, a merry devil, didst rob it of some taste of tediousness. But fare thee well, there is a ducat for thee. And, Launcelot, Soon at supper shalt thou see, Lorenzo, who is thy new master's guest. Give him this letter, do it secretly. And so farewell. I would not have my father, see me and talk with thee. Launcelot. Adieu, tears exhibit my tongue, most beautiful pagan, most sweet Jew. If a Christian do not play the knave and get thee, I am much deceived. But, adieu. These foolish drops do something drown my manly spirit. Adieu, Jessica. Farewell, good Launcelot. Exit Launcelot. Alack, what heinous sin is it in me, to be ashamed to be my father's child. But though I am a daughter to his blood, I am not to his manners. O Lorenzo, if thou keep promise, I shall end this strife. Become a Christian and thy loving wife. Exit. Scene 4. The same. A street. Enter Graciano, Lorenzo, Salarino, and Solanio. Lorenzo. Nay, we will slink away in supper time. Disguise us at my lodging, and return, all in an hour. Graciano. We have not made good preparation. Salarino. We have not spoke us yet of torchbearers. Solanio. Tis vile, unless it may be quaintly ordered, and better in my mind not undertook. Lorenzo. 
Tis now but four o'clock, we have two hours. To furnish us. Enter Launcelot with a letter. Friend Launcelot, what's the news? Launcelot. And it shall please you to break up this, it shall seem to signify. Lorenzo. I know the hand, in faith tis a fair hand. And wider than the paper it writ on, is the fair hand that writ. Graciano. Love news, in faith. Launcelot. By your leave, sir. Lorenzo. Whither goest thou? Launcelot. Mary, sir, to bid my old master the Jew to sup tonight with my new master the Christian. Lorenzo. Hold here, take this. Tell gentle Jessica. I will not fail her, speak it privately. Go, gentlemen. Exit Launcelot. Will you prepare you for this mask tonight? I am provided of a torchbearer. Solerino. I, Mary, I'll be gone about it straight. Solanio. And so will I. Lorenzo. Meet me and Graciano. At Graciano's lodging some hour hence. Solerino. Tis good we do so. Axiant Solerino and Solanio. Graciano. Was not that letter from fair Jessica? Lorenzo. I must needs tell thee all. She hath directed. How I shall take her from her father's house. What gold and jewels she is furnished with. What pages suit she hath in readiness. If ye are the Jew her father come to heaven, it will be for his gentle daughter's sake. And never dare misfortune cross her foot. Unless she do it under this excuse. That she is issue to a faithless Jew. Come, go with me, peruse this as thou goest. Fair Jessica shall be my torchbearer. Exeunt. Scene 5. The same. Before Shylock's house. Enter Shylock the Jew and Launcelot his man that was the clown. Shylock. Well, thou shalt see, thy eyes shall be thy judge. The difference of old Shylock and Bassanio. What, Jessica, thou shalt not gormandize. As thou hast done with me, what, Jessica. And sleep, and snore, and rend apparel out. Why, Jessica, I say. Launcelot. Why, Jessica. Shylock. Who bids thee call? I do not bid thee call. Launcelot. Your worship was wont to tell me I could do nothing without bidding. Enter Jessica. Jessica. Call you? What is your will? Shylock. I am bid forth to supper, Jessica. There are my keys. But wherefore should I go? I am not bid for love, they flatter me. But yet I'll go in hate, to feed upon. The prodigal Christian. Jessica, my girl. Look to my house. I am right loath to go. There is some ill a brewing towards my rest. For I did dream of money bags tonight. Launcelot. I beseech you, sir, go. My young master doth expect your reproach. Shylock. So do I his. Launcelot. And they have conspired together. I will not say you shall see a mask, but if you do, then it was not for nothing that my nose fell a bleeding on Black Monday last at six o'clock ith morning, falling out that year on Ash Wednesday was four year in th afternoon. Shylock. What, are there masks? Hear you me, Jessica. Lock up my doors, and when you hear the drum, and the vile squealing of the Rhinect fife, clamber not you up to the casements then, nor thrust your head into the public street, to gaze on Christian fools with varnished faces, but stop my house's ears, I mean my casements. Let not the sound of shallow fop re-enter, my sober house. By Jacob's staff I swear, I have no mind of feasting forth tonight. But I will go. Go you before me, Sirrah. Say I will come. Launcelot. I will go before, sir. Mistress, look out at window for all this. There will come a Christian by. Will be worth a Jewess I. Exit Launcelot. Shylock. What says that fool of Hager's offspring, ha? Huh? Jessica. His words were farewell, mistress, nothing else. Shylock. The patch is kind enough, but a huge feeder. Snail slow in profit and he sleeps by day, more than the wild cat. Drones hive not with me, therefore I part with him, and part with him, to one that I would have him help to waste, his borrowed purse. Well, Jessica, go in. Perhaps I will return immediately. Do as I bid you, shut doors after you. Fast bind, fast find. A proverb never stale in thrifty mind. Exit. Jessica. Farewell, and if my fortune be not crossed, I have a father, you a daughter, lost. Exit. Scene 6. The same. Enter the maskers, Graciano and Solerino. Graciano. This is the penthouse under which Lorenzo desired us to make stand. Solerino. His hour is almost past. Graciano. 
and it is marvel he outdwells his hour. For lovers ever run before the clock. Solerino. Oh ten times faster Venus pigeons fly, to seal love's bonds new made than they are wont. To keep obliged faith unforfeited, Graciano. That ever holds, who riseth from a feast, with that keen appetite that he sits down, where is the horse that doth untread again, his tedious measures with the unbated fire, that he did pace them first, all things that are, are with more spirit chaste than enjoyed, how like a younger or a prodigal, the scarfed bark puts from her native bay, hugged and embraced by the strumpet wind, how like the prodigal doth she return, with overweathered ribs and ragged sails, lean, rent, and beggared by the strumpet wind, enter Lorenzo, Solerino, here comes Lorenzo, more of this hereafter, Lorenzo, sweet friends, your patience for my long abode, not I but my affairs have made you wait, when you shall please to play the thieves for wives, I'll watch as long for you then, approach, here dwells my father Jew, ho, who's within, enter Jessica above, in boy's clothes, Jessica, who are you, tell me, for more certainty, albeit I'll swear that I do know your tongue, Lorenzo, Lorenzo, and thy love, Jessica, Lorenzo certain, and my love indeed, for who love I so much, and now who knows, but you, Lorenzo, whether I am yours, Lorenzo, heaven and thy thoughts are witness that thou art, Jessica, here, catch this casket, it is worth the pains, I am glad tis night, you do not look on me, for I am much ashamed of my exchange, but love is blind, and lovers cannot see, the pretty follies that themselves commit, for if they could, Cupid himself would blush, to see me thus transformed to a boy, Lorenzo, descend, for you must be my torchbearer, Jessica, what, must I hold a candle to my shames, they in themselves, good sooth, are too too light, why, tis an office of discovery, love, and I should be obscured, Lorenzo, so are you, sweet, even in the lovely garnish of a boy, but come at once, for the close night doth play the runaway, and we are stayed for at Bassanio's feast. Jessica. I will make fast the doors, and gild myself, with some mo ducats, and be with you straight. Exit above. Graciano. Now, by my hood, a gentle, and no Jew. Lorenzo. Beshrew me but I love her heartily, for she is wise, if I can judge of her, and fair she is, if that mine eyes be true, and true she is, as she hath proved herself. And therefore, like herself, wise, fair, and true, shall she be placed in my constant soul. Enter Jessica. What, art thou come? On, gentlemen, away. Our masking maids by this time for us stay. Exit with Jessica and Solerino. Enter Antonio. Antonio. Who's there? Graciano. Signor Antonio? Antonio. Fight, fight, Graciano. Where are all the rest? Tis nine o'clock, our friends all stay for you. No mask tonight, the wind is come about. Bassanio presently will go aboard. I have sent twenty out to seek for you. Graciano. I am glad, auntie. I desire no more delight, than to be under sail and gone tonight. Exeunt. Scene 7. Belmont. A room in Portia's house. Flourish of cornets. Enter Portia with the Prince of Morocco and both their trains. Portia. Go, draw aside the curtains and discover, the several caskets to this noble prince. Now make your choice. Prince of Morocco. The first, of gold, who this inscription bears. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. The second, silver, which this promise carries. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. This third, dull lead, with warning all as blunt. Who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. How shall I know if I do choose the right? Portia. The one of them contains my picture, Prince. If you choose that, then I am yours with all. Prince of Morocco. Some god direct my judgment? Let me see. I will survey the inscriptions back again. What says this leaden casket? Who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. Must give, for what? For lead? Hazard for lead? This casket threatens, men that hazard all. Do it in hope of fair advantages. A golden mind stoops not to shows of dross. I'll then nor give nor hazard aught for lead. What says the silver with her virgin hue? Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. As much as he deserves? Pause there, Morocco, and weigh thy value with an even hand. If thou be estirated by thy estimation, 
Thou dost deserve enough, and yet enough, may not extend so far as to the lady, and yet to be afeard of my deserving, were but a weak disabling of myself. As much as I deserve? Why, that's the lady, I do in birth deserve her, and in fortunes, in graces, and in qualities of breeding, but more than these, in love I do deserve. What if I strayed no farther, but chose here? Let's see once more this saying graved in gold, who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. Why, that's the lady, all the world desires her. From the four corners of the earth they come, to kiss this shrine, this mortal breathing saint. The Hyrcanian deserts and the vasty wilds, of wide Arabia are as through fairs now, for princes to come view fair Portia. The watery kingdom, whose ambitious head, spits in the face of heaven, is no bar, to stop the foreign spirits, but they come, as o'er a brook to see fair Portia. One of these three contains her heavenly picture. Eyes to ye like that lead contains her? Twere damnation, to think so base a thought. It were too gross, to rib her sear cloth in the obscure grave. Or shall I think in silver she's immured, being ten times undervalued to tried gold? O sinful thought, never so rich a gem, was set in worse than gold. They have in England, a coin that bears the figure of an angel, stamped in gold, but that's in sculpt upon. But here an angel in a golden bed, lies all within. Deliver me the key. Here do I choose, and thrive I as I may. Portia. There, take it, prince, and if my form lie there, then I am yours. He unlocks the golden casket. Prince of Morocco. Oh hell, what have we here? A carrion death, within whose empty eye, there is a written scroll. I'll read the writing. All that glisters is not gold. Often have you heard that told. Many a man his life hath sold, but my outside to behold. Gilded tombs do worms enfold. Had you been as wise as bold, young in limbs, in judgment old, your answer had not been enscrolled. Fare you well, your suit is cold, cold indeed and labor lost. Then farewell heat, and welcome frost. Portia, adieu. I have too grieved a heart, to take a tedious leave. Thus losers part. Exit with his train. Flourish of cornets. Portia. A gentle riddance. Draw the curtains, go. Let all of his complexion choose me so. Exeunt. Scene 8. Venice. A street. Enter Solerino and Solanio. Solerino. Why, man, I saw Bassanio under sail. With him is Graciano gone along. And in their ship I am sure Lorenzo is not. Solanio. The villain Jew without cries rice the duke, who went with him to search Bassanio's ship. Solerino. He came too late, the ship was under sail, but there the duke was given to understand, that in a gondola were seen together, Lorenzo and his amorous Jessica. Besides, Antonio certified the duke, they were not with Bassanio in his ship. Solanio. I never heard a passion so confessed, so strange, outrageous, and so variable, as the dog Jew did utter in the streets. My daughter? Oh my ducats? Oh my daughter? Fled with a Christian? Oh my Christian ducats! Justice? The law? My ducats and my daughter? A sealed bag, two sealed bags of ducats, of double ducats, stolen from me by my daughter? And jewels, two stones, two rich and precious stones, stolen by my daughter. Justice? Find the girl. She hath the stones upon her and the ducats. Solerino. Why, all the boys in Venice follow him, crying, his stones, his daughter, and his ducats. Solanio. Let good Antonio look he keep his day, or he shall pay for this. Solerino. Mary, well remembered. I reasoned with a Frenchman yesterday, who told me, in the narrow seas that part, the French and English, their miscarried, a vessel of our country richly fraught. I thought upon Antonio when he told me, and wished in silence that it were not his. Solanio. You were best to tell Antonio what you hear, yet do not suddenly, for it may grieve him. Solerino. A kinder gentleman treads not the earth. I saw Bassanio and Antonio part. Bassanio told him he would make some speed. Of his return. He answered do not so. Slubber not business for my sake, Bassanio. But stay the very riping of the time. And for the Jew's bond which he hath of me. Let it not enter in your mind of love. Be merry, and employ your chiefest thoughts. To courtship, and such fair ostents of love. As shall conveniently become you there. And even there, his eye being big with tears, turning his face, he put his hand behind him, 
and with affection wondrous sensible. He wrung Bassanio's hand, and so they parted. Solanio. I think he only loves the world for him. I pray thee, let us go and find him out, and quicken his embraced heaviness, with some delight or other. Solarino. Do we so. Exeunt. Scene 9. Belmont. A room in Portia's house. Enter Nerissa and a servitor. Nerissa. Quick, quick, I pray thee, draw the curtain straight. The prince of Aragon hath tie on his oath, and comes to his election presently. Flourish of cornets. Enter the prince of Aragon, his train, and Portia. Portia. Behold, there stand the caskets, noble prince. If you choose that wherein I am contained, straight shall our nuptial rites be solemnized. But if you fail, without more speech, my lord, you must be gone from hence immediately. Aragon. I am enjoined by oath to observe three things. First, never to unfold to anyone. Which casket twas I chose, next, if I fail, of the right casket, never in my life, to woo a maiden way of marriage. Lastly, if I do fail in fortune of my choice, immediately to leave you and be gone. Portia. To these injunctions everyone doth swear, that comes to hazard for my worthless self. Aragon. And so have I addressed me. Fortune now, to my heart's hope. Gold, silver, and base lead. Who chooseth me must give and hazard all he hath. You shall look fairer ere I give or hazard. What says the golden chest? Ha, huh? let me see. Who chooseth me shall gain what many men desire. What many men desire, that many may be meant. By the fool multitude, that choose by show, not learning more than the fond eye doth teach. Which prize not to th interior, but like the martlet. Builds in the weather on the outward wall. Even in the force and road of casualty. I will not choose what many men desire. Because I will not jump with common spirits. And rank me with the barbarous multitudes. Why, then to thee, thou silver treasure house. Tell me once more what title thou dost bear. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. And well said too, for who shall go about. To cousin fortune, and be honorable. Without the stamp of merit? Let none presume. To wear an undeserved dignity. Oh that estates, degrees, and offices. Were not derived corruptly, and that clear honor. Were purchased by the merit of the wearer. How many then should cover that stand bare? How many be commanded that command? How much low peasantry would then be gleaned? From the true seed of honor? And how much honor? Picked from the chaff and ruin of the times. To be new varnished? Well, but to my choice. Who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. I will assume desert. Give me a key for this. And instantly unlock my fortunes here. He opens the silver casket. Portia. Too long a pause for that which you find there. Aragon. What's here? The portrait of a blinking idiot. Presenting me a schedule? I will read it. How much unlike art thou to Portia? How much unlike my hopes and my deservings? Who chooseth me shall have as much as he deserves. Did I deserve no more than a fool's head? Is that my prize? Are my deserts no better? Portia. To offend and judge are distinct offices. And of opposed natures. Aragon. What is here? The fire seven times tried this. Seven times tried that judgment is. That did never choose amiss. Some there be that shadows kiss. Such have but a shadow's bliss. There be fools alive, IWIS. Silvered o'er, and so was this. Take what wife you will to bed. I will ever be your head. So be gone, you are sped. Still more fool I shall appear. By the time I linger here. With one fool's head I came to woo. But I go away with two. Sweet, adieu. I'll keep my oath. Patiently to bear my wrath. Exit Aragon with his train. Portia. Thus hath the candle sing the moth. Oh, these deliberate fools. When they do choose. They have the wisdom by their wit to lose. Nerissa. The ancient saying is no heresy. Hanging and wiving goes by destiny. Portia. Come, draw the curtain, Nerissa. Enter a messenger. Messenger. Where is my lady? Portia. Here, what would my lord? Messenger. Madam, there is a lighted at your gate. A young Venetian, one that comes before, to signify th approaching of his lord, from whom he bringeth sensible regrets, to wit, besides commends and courteous breath, gifts of rich value, yet I have not seen, so likely an ambassador of love. A day in April never came so sweet, to show how costly summer was at hand, as this forsperer comes before his lord. Portia. No more, I pray thee. 
I am half afeard. Thou wilt say anon he is some kin to thee. Thou spendest he such high day wit in praising him. Come, come, Nerissa, for I long to see. Quick Cupid's post that comes so mannerly. Nerissa. Bassanio, Lord love, if thy will it be? Exeunt.